Hello folks, I have a new update today and this deals with uh, glyphosate in uh, Canadian food products uh, that contain possible animal protein or meat uh, as, as tested by CFIA. I have just about reached 5000 records and uh, meat products have started coming up which has been a major surprise for me firstly because I did not know there were labs in Canada and that would test meat and I am now looking for which ones uh, because the public listed labs that I contacted none of them would uh, test animal body fluids and all that so if there is some other lab that does this test of meat products for CFIA maybe they will also do uh, animal body fluids such as people's urine or blood or breast milk of nursing mothers and so on so this is an, a matter of interest and I am trying to find out whether it's a uh, it's a captive lab that only caters to government's own orders and not open to public or, or, or what is it. This is one side of the story. The other side is the glyphosate content in this so-called meat products seem to be very low, much lower than what is to be expected in the, in the feed, uh, like uh, Roundup Ready Soy and all that where the readings are so high. So this has been a surprise for me. I was expecting that these meat products will show very high glyphosate reading, uh, readings as well. So, what I did was uh, contact a few scientists that I knew if they can throw some light on this subject of uh, surprisingly low levels of glyphosate in meat and I got two interesting responses from uh, Stephanie Seneff and Anthony Samsel of USA and I have the permission to quote them in my book and so I decided to read them out here partially. Uh, some of the information they gave me was uh, was to be published in a peer review paper which was still going through the peer review process. So I have removed those sections and I have read out uh, the rest of them and here they are. From Stephanie Seneff, your work is so important in getting this information out to the public Tony. I am really impressed with how much you have done already with this data. We just went shopping for some eggplants after I read about the zero glyphosate levels in it. One thing I would like to say about the meats is a concern I have that the glyphosate may be embedded in proteins and not properly extracted prior to measurement. Monsanto found out that they had to do extensive proteolysis in order to free up the glyphosate that they knew was present because they had radio labeled it. This problem is well known for other toxic chemicals that are non-coding amino acids. For example, proteolysis resulted in a 60 to 120 fold increased level of BMAA, a non-coding amino acid analog of proline. Animal protein with glyphosate embedded in it can be predicted to be extremely allergenic in bracket worse than plant protein bracket close and I think it could be a major source of the epidemic in autoimmune diseases that we are seeing. This is especially worrisome because animal proteins are more likely to match up with human proteins through molecular mimicry and cause trouble with autoimmunity. Stephanie Seneff, Senior Research Scientist, MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. And then we have another note from uh, scientist Anthony Samsel and he says, Tony, let me add to what Stephanie just said. All meat and fowl is contaminated with glyphosate as well as other glyphosate related molecules like n acetyl glyphosate from some genetically engineered corn and soy, glyphosate esters, salts and metabolites as well as reaction products i.e. 5 nitrosamines of glyphosate are also present. As far as numbers in Canada found in meat, they are too low based on the DuPont and Monsanto studies. I have numbers from some of my lab work with beef and pork much higher as well as glyphosate in collagens from animals like 120 parts per billion plus. Also, I need to know about Canada's method of testing for glyphosate in these 7,000 samples. Is it gas chromatography mass spectrometry or is it uh, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry or ELISA? And if they are using 
acid-related methanol. The reason that I ask, most labs doing HPLC use acid-related methanol in the method. This can mask glyphosate so that you don't get accurate results. They are too low or low levels disappear completely, giving a false negative result. Glyphosate reacts with methanol forming an ester of glyphosate which does not show up in the chromatogram where you would find glyphosate. So, the lab will say we didn't find any or the results will be low and under the radar so to speak and viewed as not a problem. There are no safe levels of glyphosate. Anthony Samsel, research scientist consultant SEAPHS, Samsel Environmental and Public Health Service, USA. Now, based on all that info, I wondered whether this glyphosate levels as found by CFIA uh, in things like RTE, ready to eat meat, meat with uh, a meal with uh, meat content, or chicken and beef and pork, uh, they were a, a correct representation of the problem of glyphosate. So, therefore, if I have to take uh, Stephanie Seneff's uh, comment that the readings uh, on something similar when they did the extensive proteolysis and removed uh, the stuff that was embedded uh, so that it could be uh, properly detected now, uh, increase the levels between 60 to 120 fold. If I am to assume that the same would also apply to glyphosate in food as tested by CFIA who probably had no knowledge about this and of course they don't decide how the test is done. It's done by the labs and I don't even know whether they had this kind of discussion with the labs of how you are going to do it and whether they, the labs do the proteolysis. I think they don't. They just do a simple test for, uh, for whatever the mechanism they have which is I think HPLC MSMS to start with. But about the meats I'm not 100% sure so we have to check up on that. So anyway, if the same logic applies and if the meats would show between 60 and 120 fold increase if proper steps were taken prior to testing then what might be the realistic figures for these if i am to take the midpoint of uh, the increase between 60 and 120 that's 90 so if i decide to create an extra column and multiply all the readings as found by CFI by 90 fold and then see where it stands if proper proteolysis was done. Then what we get is RTE at 360, chicken at 1170, beef at 1080 and pork at 270. Considering also uh, both the scientists comments, it is probably safe to say from my point of view, which is better to err on the side of safety than to uh, believe this kind of uh, uh, industry talk that uh, it's all okay, is that these foods I should be avoiding like the plague. There is no safe level of glyphosate, we know that. Uh, and what is showing up in meat is likely much less than what it actually is unless a special efforts are made, made to expose the glyphosate out of the meat proteins. And also because they are these meat proteins mimic our own so well that a lot of it slips may slip past and cause uh, be a trigger for autoimmune diseases and that it's comparatively an undesirable item to be present in meat uh, as against let's say in plant proteins. So anyway, this is my rant for the day you can say and bye for now.